All right, so if you've spent much time thinking about self-improvement or the process of learning, you've probably heard this quote before. It's important to view knowledge as a sort of semantic tree. Make sure you understand the fundamental principles, i.e. the trunk and big branches, before you get into the leaves or details or there is nothing for them to hang on to. So that comes from Elon Musk and it gets quoted everywhere. And what's always bothered me about it is that nobody ever actually explains how you're supposed to do that. Like you're supposed to understand the fundamentals of whatever it is that you're interested in, but how do you actually start to understand what those fundamentals are? This is something that's important to me because I love learning new things. And so a few months ago, I sat down to try and work out a systematic way for doing this. And my three point strategy for doing that is what I'm gonna explain in this video. Okay, step one is going down the Y ladder. Okay, so if you spent much time around small children, you already know what the why ladder is. It's the thing where a child asks why once, and then every answer you give leads to another why until you get to something you can't explain, and at that point you either look up the answer, ask them why they think it happens, or you tell them because I said so. Hopefully you don't do that last one too often. And so if you're a grown-up, the why ladder is often a good way to pull apart something that you don't understand about a complicated issue. Tim Urban, who's put together some amazing book-length blog posts about topics like AI, Fermi's Paradox, and Tesla, talks about finding the foggy spots in the story that make him kind of glaze over because he doesn't fully understand them. And as Tim says, when you clear away the fog from the surface, you often find more fog underneath. So then you keep repeating that process of going down the Y ladder until you clear away all the fog and you hit what feels like the bottom. In the case of understanding why electric cars are important, that might be understanding where fossil fuels come from and why that makes them a finite resource. And then that leads you to an understanding of the fact that we are going to have to get ourselves away from our reliance on them eventually. And also an understanding that it's better to speed that process along for various other reasons. So start with a concept you don't understand and keep asking why until you haven't got a clear answer. And that's where you start with the next stage. Okay, step two is what I'm gonna call purposeful procrastination. And procrastination gets a bad rap, especially among like self-improvement circles. But what makes this different from the regular kind is that there is actually an overarching purpose to it. You're not just randomly clicking around online or on social media. You are trying to understand one specific topic. So Urban talks about how he always starts by feeling like he's blindfolded in a room. And at the start of the process, he's just feeling his way around, trying to work out where the walls are. So he'll start at Wikipedia for a basic foundation and to kind of understand the topic in general. And then he also talks about something that I do a lot, which is just opening tab after tab on his computer and skim reading a whole bunch of different articles to get an overall sense of the topic. And you might be worried that you're going to end up reading things that contradict or that don't agree or that are inaccurate. But at this stage, that doesn't really matter because all you're doing is reading a whole bunch of stuff to get an idea of where there's disagreement and where there's consensus on what we as like a species broadly agree on about whatever it is you're trying to learn. So ask yourself, where do all these articles and videos agree? That's where the walls are and that's where you've started to find what the consensus on the topic is. And then you can start to map out the places where there isn't so much consensus, which lets you understand the topic more broadly. So as an example of how this might work, let's talk about working out for a second. Working out is something that a lot of people have strong opinions about, even though almost nobody has a strong trunk of knowledge backing up the things they think they know. So over the course of their lives, people accumulate a lot of leaves or twigs, kind of disconnected facts about physical fitness that they're based on something they tried once or something a friend once told them or something they think they once read somewhere. And this is why most people can't agree. Should you train to failure or not? Should you mostly run fast or slow? How much protein should you eat? These are things a lot of people have an opinion about, but that almost nobody can back up with a solid trunk of knowledge. So what should be the trunk of your knowledge about fitness? I think one good answer to this is the SAID principle, or specific adaptation to impose demand. So that basically means that your body will adapt to whatever you frequently ask it to do. Whether that means lifting one heavy thing once or lifting a light thing a whole bunch of times. But I actually think there's a better place to start an understanding of physical fitness and how the body works. And you could even call that the roots of your tree if you like. And I think that's best explained by this quote from biologist Theodosius Dobzhansky. Nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. But to get into that, it's probably time to move on to step three of growing your knowledge tree. And step three is to explain it like someone else is five. Okay, so you're probably already familiar with this concept. There's a quote that's often misattributed to Einstein that goes, if you can't explain something to a six-year-old, you really don't understand it yourself. 
And you might have also seen the episode of The Office where Oscar tries to explain office budgeting to Michael by talking about lemonade stands. And obviously you don't literally have to do this, but trying to make something super understandable for somebody who's unfamiliar with even the basics is a great way to make sure you've got a really firm grasp on the fundamentals of it yourself. And so bearing that in mind, here's my best attempt at explaining why understanding evolution is absolutely fundamental to an understanding of the human body and how physical fitness works. If you want to, you can just skip this part and head to the conclusion. Okay, so you've probably heard evolution described as survival of the fittest, and that's true, but only kind of up to a point. What actually happens is when organisms replicate themselves, whether they're plants or animals or whatever, their offspring aren't always exactly the same. Sometimes mutations in their DNA result in those organisms changing in ways that might be beneficial for them, or might not. A common example is that if you live somewhere where the most nutritious food is up high, having a slightly longer neck than everyone else is really helpful. And over thousands and thousands of generations, that means you get some animals with really long necks. There's also a counter example that not everybody mentions, which is that if there's plenty of food on the ground, then growing and maintaining that enormous neck might be a waste of resources and calories that could come in more useful elsewhere. So in food on the ground land, having a long neck might actually be an evolutionary disadvantage, which is also important to understand. Now, the really important thing to understand about evolution is that it's not about helping the organisms survive, but helping them to replicate. If you have six children then die as soon as they're capable of taking care of themselves, then you're still incredibly evolutionarily successful compared to someone who only has one child, but then lives into really old age. Now, obviously it's all a lot more complicated than that, but even a baseline knowledge of evolution like this can let us consider different ideas about fitness in a whole bunch of different ways. So for instance, look at protein consumption. For a long time, the common knowledge in fitness circles was that you could only absorb about 20 or 30 grams of protein in one sitting. And that if you took in any more other than that, it would be either excreted or exhaled or otherwise wasted in some way that meant it, there wasn't any point in taking it in in the first place. And obviously this works out great for you if you're a company that sells convenient ways to get 30 gram hits of protein every day. Um, and it's not so great if people start thinking, well, maybe I could just eat a steak for dinner and get 80 grams in one shot. But does that make sense in light of evolution? Not really. Imagine you're part of a caveman group that kills a mammoth. If you all eat a huge chunk of that mammoth meat in one go, the guys who can't use most of the protein they've just eaten are gonna be at an evolutionary disadvantage over the guys who can use it for growth and repair. And if that scenario happens often enough over thousands of years, then the cavemen who evolved the ability to absorb lots of protein in one go are gonna be at a huge evolutionary advantage over those who don't. So in evolutionary terms, it makes sense that we would be able to absorb a decent chunk more protein than like 30 grams at one sitting and you would need really solid reasons or evidence to explain why the opposite is the case. And it's a lot more complicated than that, but the point is that evolution is a great trunk of knowledge to start considering other things you hear about fitness, whether they're about intermittent fasting, stress, anything like that. And trying to understand fitness without a baseline knowledge of how the human body responds to exercise and nutrition is like just scooping leaves and twigs up off the ground. You've got no way to evaluate them and nothing to hang your new knowledge off. So again, the process for growing a strong knowledge tree is to use the Y ladder, procrastinate purposefully, and make sure you could explain it to someone else. I really can't recommend this enough. It's why you want to start with music at the theory, you want to start with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or the fundamental principles of what you're trying to do to the other person. I'm going to put a whole bunch of links in the description that go into more detail on some of these areas. Even if you're not interested in these specific areas, I would love to hear what you think the foundation of knowledge in other areas that I don't know anything about are. I love learning stuff, I would love to hear from you. Until the next time, good learning.